We played seven Fidel Lacerda's heavy games. As you can see on the side, we're going to share with you what we think about it. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Nipple University. Welcome back to our Tabletop Diary. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about one of our favorite designers' games, Fidel Lacerda. Mm -hmm. So, we only talk about the seven heavy games that we've, we've got here on the side. Mm -hmm. We, I don't think I have played any of the other games that are not this heavy. I think he's got, he's got a version of uh, Age of Steam. Yep. Uh, in Portugal, which is as heavy as the rest of these, uh, which we have not played. Yeah. But these are these are the seven big games he's known for. Yes. So we are going to talk about <coughs> what roughly maybe how the game plays and then what we think about it mm -hmm. and then comparing um, from one to another. Yeah. So where should we start, Terence? Um, I mean, I think just to talk sort of very generally about the games, they all have... They all have something that really you don't get out of other. They've got those very, the two very clear hallmarks. Yeah. One is that in most cases, uh, escape plan accepted, mm -hmm. there is a very clear shared objective or shared incentive feature in the scoring, and particularly Kanban, Kanban Gallerist, yeah. and On Mars. Um, if you all work to the same sort of thing, you're all going to score well in that. It's not the sort of game where you want to go off and do your own thing because it's not yeah. going to score very well. Which is a bit of a prisoner's dilemma, I believe. Mm. I think some might say that, but this is a complex version. I think I know what you're going to say next, but let's continue. And the other one, which is really his hallmark more than anyone else, is lots of little micro actions mm -hmm. that uh, you get as bonuses to almost every action you do. Yeah. And it's, I, it's always what you're trying to think about. I do have one more. Yep. Executive action, which is actually part of what you just said. Just part of that. Yeah, part of just... It's also called executive action in um, these games, I believe. If not... I think... Cons some, there are some... Most of them has got executive actions. I think consistently across all of them, I think yep. that's the term it's used. And yeah, a lot of small actions that you do on the side of your main action. Radio. So let's get to it. Yeah. Um... So we'll go through them chronolo chronologically. This one here, Vinhos, mm -hmm. the Portuguese winemaking game. Mm -hmm. This was our first introduction. Um, I think for me, it was it would have been both of our heaviest game that we'd played at the time. Yes. Um, I think because this was quite. This was early on. I was only a year into I think, modern. No, I think I played it. No, I played one before you. So I played yeah. one more Vinhos than you. Okay. Yeah. I think. That was with Adrian, our friend. Okay. At a uh, board game meetup. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This was so. This was inside my first year of hobby gaming. Wow. Um, I think uh, two I think months. Mine too, two months earlier, I'd played Scythe. Uh, one month earlier, I'd played Panamax. Yep. And then a week earlier, I'd played Viticulture, and those were probably the only three heavy games before that. So this was a yes. really big step up. I remember it being a. A long night, a one hour teach at a busy meetup. Yeah. We were the first ones in, we were the last ones out playing beautiful, just this game. Beautiful artwork. I think this might be one of my favorite of Ian O'Toole's um, artwork. Yeah, I would agree. I know yeah. he's got all these big box games that he's done with Vital. And this is the one for me that's the prettiest as well. I just yep, love the way you. the colors go together. Yeah, I can't really take it. That's okay, keep going. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was very... The components are impressive. Yeah. Well, you know, I think um, this is Eagle... Sorry, Tarrant. Yeah. Eagle Griffin's games components are yeah. quite impressive. But yes, keep going. Yeah. Uh, so we... The first time we played it, it was the 2010 version. Mm -hmm. This is the 2016 box, but we played the 2010 version. And I remember the thing that stood out to me the most was the bank mechanic. It was something I've oh, never yes. seen before. And I know that's been removed for the 2016 version, yeah. uh, which we have also played now. But yeah, I was really taken by the bank mechanic. Do you like it though? I mean, I don't think I... It was okay for me. I might actually... Sorry, I think it adds a little bit of complexity. It does. Yeah. 
at this board, like beautiful mm. board. Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, what did we do with this game? Look at these little components, right? It's like these little ones on the on the yeah. side in the corner. Those are the so um, beautiful. expansion parts. Yeah, yeah. those are expansion parts. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I I distinctly remember it being really thinky, you know, only 12 actions, but they, there was so much to do. So thinky. Um, and I immediately wanted to play it again. I don't think I did for about a year and a half, mm -hmm. but I definitely immediately wanted to play that again. It really stood out, and it's probably still one of, if not my favourite game. Mm -hmm. um, and we've played 2016 now, and... I didn't like that it took the bank away, but I think I liked everything else it mm -hmm. brought to it. It made the magnate section mm -hmm. uh, more streamlined. It made the fair more streamlined. Because that was the other thing, the fair. Having victory points inside victory points. Uh, I know. I haven't, seen, I haven't really seen that. Maybe in a couple of Lada Hill games, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dungeon Pets has it a bit. But I like the magnate tiles on that edition. Yeah. It just gives an extra um, or sort of victory point at the end, an extra engine building in the middle. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't really bring my brain, extra brain yeah. power too much. Yes. And I don't think it's, I think one of the questions, I, I, I've i seen the question in the Facebook groups, uh, the various board game Facebook groups, a few times people trying to ask what is the first Vital Asserta game they should play. Mm -hmm. And I, even though this is not the easiest or not the it's not the least heavy mm -hmm. it's the one that has the most familiar mechanics okay because the I little grid that. movement thing is is if you've played any sort of worker placement mm -hmm. that's not going to be that unusual to you and so for that reason i think it's the perfect entry game because yep. it has the most familiar the mechanics. most familiar mechanics and it's a beautiful game it's a beautiful game it's very heavy and thinky and very good yeah so that's one Next is, we have Kanban. Kanban. This is uh, coming out, so there's the big box um, O'Toole version coming out soon. This yes. is the old, oh, is this the driver's edition? No, automotive. No, no. It's the automotive edition. So this yep. is the only one where we don't have it in the, the huge components, but it doesn't matter. It still plays well. I do enjoy this. Yes. Um, I always find the thing that characterizes this mm -hmm. game for me is it's, it's almost the easiest of them to move the pieces around mm. yes and the hardest to explain and understand the scoring we did have to play for kanban by the way and a little bit of scoring samples mm. playthrough thingy because that is the most complicated part i don't know if you agree with me write the comment sections below for me that's the most complicated part so i always keep asking what's how how does it score mm. It's not easy to explain as well. Yeah, it's where you've got to. It's where you've got to remember you've got that shared incentive bit. Of um, course, yes. Do what other people are that doing. Drama, yeah. Find a way to to make that work, and then look at your Sandra objectives and use whatever actions you've got on the side right. to make those happen. And you like to play with min, min Sandra. I like the nice Sandra. I think it means. It, <laughs> are you pretty sure? Yeah, Mean Sandra works well. I think. Yeah. You can you can tell the game was designed for Mean Sandra, um, which it says in the rule book as well. Mm -hmm. Nice Sandra was in there as a variant. Okay. Um, it works well because it gives you an incentive to go up the tracks. To go up the tracks, yeah. but not a not a huge incentive. Yeah, but that's true actually. I find this is a game where if it goes to its normal length, you are. You know, it's that well timed game where mm -hmm. you can do just about everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and you've got to get it in the right order and you've got to target your Sandra mm -hmm. cards. And I think if you can wrap your head around how that works mm -hmm. and wrap your head around how the intermediate scorings, even if they score a small amount several times, mm -hmm. actually adds up, uh, it's a really nice game. By the way, this is kind of like almost first impression or first few times impression. So we've played this a few times, we've played this a few times, yep. but not all of this we play a few times. So yep. just letting you know. Yep, so I do, um, yeah, Kanban's among my, my top ones there. Right. It is, yeah, it is a good one where, uh, yeah, it's, it's just kind of like flows, kind of flows mm. properly, if you want. Anyway, yes. Yeah. And? The Gallerist. Woohoo! Probably his most well-known, I think, would be fair to say. Probably. 
Um, probably well, the... Well, the Spinos as well. They're all... I mean, they're all well known. I think this is the one yeah, that... Yeah, okay. I would guess this is mm. one most people have played. I really love the box for this. It's like a uh, half torn out package mm. of artwork. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I remember being introduced to this one by my um, friend from work. Sorry, it's actually three canvases. I just realized that. That's like three mm. paintings in canvas. Anyways, yeah, um, yeah from yeah, I, remember, I remember that My friend well. from work had seen, I think it was Rado's video on it. Mm -hmm. And we were both sort of you know, going through meetups into heavier games at the time. He's the one that got you to that board game meetup where yep. I met you at the first time. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and I remember he wouldn't stop talking about it for a few months because he just <laughs> sort of, he'd seen Rado go through it yeah. and it, it threw all these mechanics he'd never seen before and it looked really interesting. <laughs> and we eventually did play it. We played it with him and... And my friend has got yeah. the copy at the time. I, I didn't. Yeah, because these didn't him. come out in Australia for a while. It was a while before the Lacerda games were on okay. the Australian shelves. Oh, right. Yep. Um, and yeah, this one is... I reckon it took three plays before I properly understood it. I think the third time we played it, mm -hmm. um, that was where I really sort of saw... Uh, how to how to use the micro actions and particularly how to grab the bonuses on the left hand side of the board um, to utilize that fully mm. the follow action is quite powerful on this one yep yeah that's the whole kicked out action mm -hmm. thing using your um, there's a lot of good things to balance yeah. there and it's not always easy to see how it's it's, it's panning out the, but, especially for the first player well some people probably be okay but yeah. for me it's like um yeah, I definitely got extra clarity three plays in to yes. this one. Okay. Um, and I think the bit that stands out here is the Neapolitan meeples in the middle. Um, <laughs> that, I feel like Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> I mean, that one being its own... That's sort of the new mechanic. That's the bit where... What is it called? Um... Let us know as well. Yeah, I don't know what you call I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like... Buerke... A sign? No, it's not even our workers. Mm. I think, I think though that's the one where the ga the the gallerist is it's, uh, one of the light. It's probably the lightest of these games oh. in terms of the total number of rules and the things to do. But that mechanic, the yes. sort of meeples mechanic in the middle, and the fact that they play so heavily into your micro actions and getting your influence and getting your money. Um, that's what makes it not the best entry level one. That's right. That's why Vinyas, it's more familiar with the mechanics, right. even though yes. it is more thinky and tight. You're right. I call it not, it's almost like resource management, but meeple management. Hmm. It's like a, I guess they are engine. They are engine building of sorts. That's right. It is engine building hmm. placement. I don't know. Should create another one. Yeah. No, it's a good game. Yes. Okay, next. Next. Lisboa. Woo Lisboa, we have only brought that one to the table once. Yes. Um, and it was in a busy meetup. And it's a, in a it, wasn't, it wasn't the right time to do it. Yeah. Uh, trying to teach over the noise and then play it. It was it's the like full... A, yeah, yeah, yeah. It took yeah. us the full day to do it. There was a lot in this. It's not They're the full all... day. It's like half a day. The full meetup. The full meetup. Yeah. It definitely took us the full meetup. I think we did the teach and then we asked, should we go back to one of our houses to actually play it, even though it was all on the table because it was. It, it was, was so yeah. Loud it was like the I think the table and it's a bit dark. Mm. Yeah. Anyways. I think the mechanic out of this one, mm. um, and I've seen it a little more often since, but it was kind of the first time I'd seen it, was the mechanic where you've got a card and then the way you play the card not necessarily what's on the card uh dictates what else you can do because the mechanic you've got the cards if you play it under your uh player board into your tableau mm -hmm. then you do one of the six small mm -hmm. action uh, two of the six small actions if you pay for them or if you play it onto the court you do the major action yes um and that was 
Yeah, it was something that I hadn't seen before, I hadn't taught it before, mm -hmm. and it was very, it was hard for me playing it to wrap my head around that mm -hmm. as well. I've seen that since in um, Robin Hood and the Merry Men yes. from Final Frontier, that's got that mechanic. And there was another one recently, I guess Underwater Cities to a limited extent, has yeah. the how you play the card dictates what happens sort of thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, that was very new with this, and I don't know if it was and the first one. But. It's got like also multiple use of a card, in mm. a way. Like Brass Lake Aside, Brass Birmingham has got that as well. They've got that yeah. multi-use of card, or this world, yeah. or a few of Martin Moore's scheme has got that yeah. sort of mechanics, mm. which I like. Yep. Um, I, I remember building is quite powerful. I don't, building no, is powerful. Building and, no, building and then things happen, things seems to be happened the right way. It's, mm. it's, you know, not always building is very powerful, I think. Yeah, you built early. No, none of us really knew what we were trying to do there. You built, you beat us by 100 points. This was a four player game and you beat second place by 100 How points. How do you remember that? I, because it was an almighty stomping. It was... <laughs> no, because it's, I mean, isn't that clear? Like, if you put the early and then the other like you you can ac accumulate points but then again i know that there are always other things that you need to mm. worry about i don't know i just yeah. like yeah you definitely lucky. you definitely went the right way getting in there early i remember my mistake was doing too many small card actions mm. and not enough court actions right um but yeah because i think because there were so many actions in this game mm. Compared with Vinyos, it had... What do you mean, so many actions? Like, Vinyos had nine actions on the grids, <laughs> That's right? True, yeah, you yeah. had nine different things you can do, but four of them were building wi uh, vineyards and wineries, and... Yes, got crudy. Two, three of them were selling or yeah, going yeah, to the yeah. fair, so... And then one was the banks, so... You sort of could portion them off yeah. really easily. This one was a bit tougher because there were ten different actions mm -hmm. and sort of five different... Um, pockets of play that yeah. you could go for because there was the whole building bit there was the shipping bit there was the cleric bit um a couple others so yeah i i would need to i definitely need to bring this to the table a couple more times mm -hmm. i couldn't unlike vinyos where i could pick it up and feel like i sort of knew what was going on first time same with same to a lesser extent with galleries yeah this one i really didn't know what was going on first time <laughs> That was maybe because that's the thing, like galleries, you need to play more. So we want yeah. to play this once or twice, I think. Yeah. yeah. So just need to play more. Yeah, wow. that's true. I, I think, mean, that, and it's, look, that's true for all games. It's a pretty <laughs> Let's do this game. <laughs> it's true for any game. You get more out of it the more you play. Yes. And there's more variants and that sort of thing. Anyways, we've got CR2 here. CR2 Second Chance. Mm -hmm. Which is, which we play cooperatively. Yep. Because why not, right? I mean... We haven't played. I don't know if I don't remember other modes has got cooperative mode. I don't remember that they do have cooperative mode. There are solos. There's no cooperatives in yeah. the others. Okay, but this has got cooperative mode as well as yeah. the normal multiplayer against each other mode. Yeah, so it doesn't, and it's a semi-cooperative. You mm. can very easily, <clears throat> you know, semi-cooperative has. I think from what I've read, is it semi-cooperative? It's semi-cooperative. Did we play semi-cooperative? No, we played fully co-op. That's right, yes. And I think I think what I've read, it's quite a difficult semi-co-op mm -hmm. to win. Okay. Which is not the sort of semi-co-op I like. Yeah. Um, I, I think if you've got to work super hard to win, mm -hmm. then... Is that Australia? Yeah, like Australia, yeah. where you have, to, you have to cooperate more than you realise. Mm. And if everyone's doing their own thing, you, mm -hmm. just, you just kind of... And what was that dwarf... Winter? Dwarf Winter, yeah. You yeah, that to, was also, yeah, you have to, it's, it's really tough that one. Yeah, we basically, particularly two player. Yeah. We essentially tried to, the second time we played, we played fully co op and mm. I think we still lost. <laughs> the first time we so. played semi co op. We almost won one more turn. <clears throat> yeah, we got really close. Yeah. The yeah. first time when we semi co opted, it, we just got, or when we, yeah, we're trying when to score we points first, yeah, we got yeah. completely Because we more focusing on <clears throat> ourselves than the co op yeah. element, and then we just like, Destroy. Yeah, that's yes. a general question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think with CO2, we... The components got, are so cute as well. Components oh are cute. We've got those same hallmarks where you've got all your little micro actions mm -hmm. that you're targeting. Um, it's executive action. Yep. 
I think, and we'll probably talk about this more in a different vlog, mm -hmm. I've never come across, I don't think I have ever come across a co-op that is more puzzle than this one. A puzzle cooperative. I Look, felt this was more puzzle than game. Spirit Island has got a lot of puzzle. It's, it's not like very clear that it is a puzzle, yeah. but I think it does have puzzle depending on what card each person has and then you try to work together what's the best action. Yeah. But I know what you mean about this. I think that's the difference. It's a different... Almost all the information's on the table at the start of the game. Right. You, oh, you do the mechanics like it's like it's a game, but you yeah. you know almost everything. But oh, the coal power, <coughs> is it coal? The coal power? The fossil fuel ones. Fossil fuel ones, yeah. They don't yeah. between two and twenty, thirty, or forty. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll talk about this in a yeah. different vlog. I've sort yeah. of been putting some thoughts together about uh, when when a co-op becomes a puzzle and does it ever stop being a game? But uh, mm -hmm. we still had a we had a good time working through this. Mm -hmm. um, we were able. I thought it. we were going to lose. It definitely is disheartening when you're on zero victory points after every round. That's the game. Um, Trying to just like scrape in, getting points, but yeah. we need to pay so that we can get the CO2 level down. Yep. Yeah. It is very nicely timed in that way. Yeah. So that's yeah. CO2. Now, what, what we found like halfway on the game, still on CO2, is that, that those tracks, what do you call it? The scientists? The track? Uh, those track on the left. On one side of the board. Yeah, the tech, no, the tech re research tracks, research I think they're called. Yeah. So that's actually is victory points. So when we're trying to be on the same spot, so we both get that money and we can either get money or victory mm. points, that actually helps us a lot. Yeah, that was an interesting part of the yeah. tactics. Mm. Okay. Okay. <coughs> uh, which one? Uh, Escape Plan was Escape the next one released. So yes. oh. Escape Plan is the most recent one we've played. Uh, for the first time, so we mm -hmm. have only played it the once. Yep. Um, it is the, it's the only game among these that doesn't have shared incentive. Does it? Yeah, there's no... There's well, there's kind of like shared hidden in incentive. Like when you open something, it might benefit you, might benefit me as well, but you don't know how benefit it to you or not. Those businesses... Well, that's true. Those businesses that you open, then it's you obviously you're trying to place it near you yeah and it's still other people can get it it's not really directly open table shared incentive though so it is yeah. a little bit different yeah certainly i don't go to a place and then that becomes more valuable for yeah. both of us and that's i think the big difference because it's the only one of these games that has none of that like vinyos mm -hmm. doesn't have much but it mm -hmm. has the um renown cubes yeah um <clears throat> whereas this one has none of it mm -hmm. It seems different though. It's when I play this, I, t I told you before, I told Tarrant, it's a little bit. I feel like it's like a merry trash. Is, is it whatever it is you call it? I don't particularly like that term, a merry, just American type game or whatever, a merry game. Mm. I will call it a merry game. Let's just call it a merry <laughs> game. Uh, because it's very thematic. I, like, I do like the theme. It is mm. thematic and it does have some sort of take that, not fully take that, but. When you get to move around the police, because you don't want to get captured, you can move it to your opponents. It, I know it is mitigated as well, but it is more, has got like slight take that element, I think. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, a little bit. And I guess you open yourself up to being take that by yes. getting notoriety. Yep. But as long as you're moving it closer, you could affect someone else's game. That's correct. You could choose to. Mm. Um, it's a bit different this one isn't it it's very different i think the couple of things it's that struck merry, me a, mer a merry game but it's yeah. it feels a little bit like that a little bit i think the couple of things that struck me like like a few of these um the gameplay there were a couple of things about the gameplay that mm -hmm. turned out differently to how i imagined the imagined it from the rule book mm -hmm. so <clears throat> one was as you were getting less income as mm -hmm. the game was going on I'd seen how that worked in Lisboa, mm -hmm. where the value of the um, different products <coughs> dropped down to pretty much nothing yep. as the game went on. Whereas with Escape Plan, you just didn't have time to visit all of the locations, and so the income was ones. yeah, the income was still like five or six at the end of the game, so it was still a way of getting money. Mm -hmm. um, I think the 
the first the first round where there were only like four locations on the board, neither of us could, really yeah. knew what we were doing. Yes. Yeah. But I think it's hard to lose the game in those three turns as well. Because mm -hmm. pretty much everything you're going to do is going to have some value. Does it need to be, I can't remember, does it need to be, like, does the shop need to appear at the first round? Or does it need to be, or is it all to totally random? I think there is a shop at the there's start. There's a shop. I think there's always a shop at the there's start. Also, okay, yeah. So at least, you know, that's probably where people want to go first, mm. to go and get shops, get supply, get things to try to help them in the game. Yeah, because I, I went and got a gang first up. I think you went yeah. to a shop first up. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember... No, I did, I, did, uh, I did income first up. Oh, ah, yes. That was did. a mistake. <laughs> I remember after the second turn, um, I like penned myself in. I didn't have enough movement to get mm. anywhere useful. Mm. Um, <clears throat> or anywhere terribly useful. <laughs> but Somewhat useful. Yeah. We're sort of, we're sort of uh, dancing around it a bit. I think once the game got to the third phase mm -hmm. and late in the second phase, I could sort of see what I was trying to do. Mm. I was he knows what to do. Like I was never going to get to all the buildings, but I was going to get to my one cluster. Yeah. I had a key so I could get into the site that you closed off for mm -hmm. me. I'd done enough things to get a couple of extra actions. Mm -hmm. Um... And it was almost like the places I was going didn't, by the end, it didn't make a big difference. It was all about working out the movement puzzle. Mm. Um, and so all this investing in gangs and investing in um, yeah. riot gear and stuff like that, or things that would harm my, or that would remove my wounds at the start of the game, all of that started to mm -hmm. come to effect. Right. And sort of coming to that realization that you can take some wounds and it's not going to harm you that badly. That's what I've done wrong as well. I feel like <coughs> in a vision and I had mm. a card that gives me wound heal and then I didn't even use it. And then at the end I have extra movement. I had to escape first because I can't afford to pay the 10 money to escape yeah. the second time. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely. So you got that one as well yeah. in the bag. Yeah. I Thief. Think, <laughs> yeah. I think the... We definitely were both too gun shy on taking wounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if we played again, we would dodge more cops that way. Mm -hmm. We probably. Um, and then sort of thinking about how that places in with with your placement and realizing, like when I read the rules, there were so many movement options. You got mm -hmm. the subway, the heliport. Yeah. Um, helipad with the gang. The member. helipad with the gang members, yeah. which I never even really thought I would use, but then I saw yeah. how valuable all of that. Yeah, we didn't know at the start. <coughs> That's definitely valuable and just add just a little thing like gasoline mm. is that just that one extra movement is yep. it's very helpful mm. and I did mention you, to you as well it's one of those games where if you don't exit you basically just lose the game so yeah. I don't know what is it called it's just like just this thing get it or lose yeah. it's like in Google if you don't reach the the temple of purity, heavenly, purity. Heaven, yep. heavenly purity then you lose yeah. so it makes me worried if I don't count all of my movements correctly, then I might mm. lose. So that might actually make me a little bit inefficient because I make sure I have this, I have this, and then at the end had extra things that I could have done but I didn't do mm. just to make sure that I have reached that. Or it might be just like just enough, but usually a little bit over. Yeah, it's always an interest. Like I've found that with Gugong, we've played it each time we've played it. Like everyone's got to the top yeah. really easily. You don't have to don't act waste it's not actually early that turns. Easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but if you don't know, if your first game is yeah. like, oh, am but I you've had bad it? anachrony experiences, right? Oh so. my god, yes. It's um, I forgot to go to the, the evacuation. Evacuation. That's right. So that's another yeah. another flop. What I will say for this game mm -hmm. um, is that there were. I think eight different locations. Mm -hmm. So I was explaining eight different rules plus the, the movement ones. So there was, but there were essentially eight different actions. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I guess because the exit had three options. There were like 10 different actions. You only get 10 or 11 actions in the game. Yeah. And so I spent a lot of time explaining actions that we didn't even use. We weren't using. We didn't go to clinic. Yeah. There are other things as well. I didn't go to action and get income. You did. Yeah, and I think that was the, that was the one negative for me is mm. that 
you've got an hour of rules to teach because there's so many options. Yeah. But then players can ignore half the options yeah. and still have a good crack at the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so having played it the once, I think if I taught it again, I would put more emphasis on the movement puzzle element of it. Mm -hmm make sure people were planning that side of it out because whichever way you choose to go and get money, um, you should be able to make it work. Yeah. I know that that's, it could be a little bit overwhelming, but maybe for advanced players, probably not. There's like a lot of options. Can, you mm. can just use half of the actions or options and then just ignore completely the rest and you'll be fine. Mm. I don't know. And we played two player, which had to have the uh, Sandra mechanic in yeah. it as well. Yes. Oh, that's only two players. Yep. Okay. With three players, you don't need to uh, block as many things out. Now we have. Brings us to the last one. On last Mars. but not least, on Mars. So this is one of the. It's actually the recent, the most recent most release. Recent? Yes. So on Mars. So this is a big giant game. I do have short video on Mars. On on Mars. <laughs> uh, well, three four minutes just outlining the vibe of the game. And it's essentially, I think it's just doing worker placement back and forth from the Mars and space station. So you're going to have to, it's kind of like the game kind of gives you incentive to move often because every time you move, you get a bonus and the bonus is usually pretty good. Yeah. I will say that that was when I saw that mechanic, mm -hmm. like sometimes when I'm reading rules or seeing videos and sometimes I'll see a mechanic that I just think that's brilliant mm -hmm. or I really want to try that. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was what I first felt when I saw the bank in Vinyos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the back and forth mechanic mm -hmm. on, on Mars, I just thought, yeah, that's, that really works. And I'm really interested to, mm -hmm. to play that. And the fact that it gets, longer as the game goes on really works with the game having yes. once we played it yeah, i sort of yeah. didn't know how that would go but it actually yeah. it does really work mm -hmm. <clears throat> particularly because you can just drop back down to earth you done well on that one isn't it i did win our game yes, yes. um well i think the so three player games there was a while back yep yeah. yeah um i forget exactly what i did to win i think i scored a couple of the sign not scientists i got a couple of those objective <laughs> yeah. cards um which worked okay for me, mm -hmm. and I was watching the... <coughs> I did a lot of building at the right time. Mm. I think that was a key element of it. Yes. We did forget some of the LSS bonuses. I remember that. that okay. And in the middle there, the building that... Is that a shared incentive as well? There's an element of shared incentive yeah. there, because as the... Um, you get more resources for mm -hmm. a bigger complex. Mm -hmm. And you've got the the lab tech tiles mm -hmm. where you use each other's. So it's very shared incentive in that way. Do you think On Mars has got similar feel to Black Angel? Um, Not in the way, well, it's, it's different mechanics. It's dice drafting. Yeah. Is it dice drafting? It is dice drafting. Black Angel, yeah. Black Angel, yeah. It had dice stealing. Was it drafting? I think you rolled it. You roll it and then... It's a bit anyway. too long. It's a bit yeah, too long. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. That's okay. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe the theme. Space theme. I think the thing that... The thing I would emphasise teaching this again mm -hmm. um, was the most counterintuitive element of the game because it's the only game I can think of where building gives you more resources. Mm. Um, you tell someone an action is building and mm. they expect to put resources away and gain back a building. And yep. here you are either giving up one resource to get a different resource, mm -hmm. or if it's a complex, you're giving up one resource to get like four resources. And so it's the only, really the only game I can think of where it's one of your main ways of getting resources immediately is building. And oh, wow. Yes. And I guess it's the equivalent of your you're building something which is then going to produce for you. Yeah. And many games have that where yeah, you yeah, build yeah. and then it produces every round. But not right away. But not right away. Yeah. And so that's the... took me half a game to uh, wrap my head around that that was what building meant. You still did well. So, yeah, very good. Mm. So, out of these seven, some are off screen now. Mm. We talk about this as well. Mm. And we've got our top three of Fidel Lucida's game. What are they? Um, I think... Are I you know. guessing for me or are you... I 
know you. I know, I, unless you change your mind, your Terence top fiddle to the game is Vinyos, which is over there. Yeah, Vinyos is my top. Um, and Can Man and Gallerist would be the other ones in the top three. Isn't it the second is Gallerist? Depends on the day. Yeah. Right. Um, but those are the ones we've played the most. Yes. And additional plays on the. I will say I enjoyed them the most on the mm -hmm. first play as mm -hmm. well. Um, but who knows? Additional plays with the others may bring them up. My, my first one would be Vinyos as well. And second one is Gallerist. Yep. But the third one, it won't be Can Man though. Yeah. Because of that complex, I'm just looking at this. It might be Lisboa. Yeah. Not because I want it, but it's I don't know. It's like I was thinking about CO2 because I like cooperative game, but yeah. that you know mechanics like there's a lot of things, and then you just I'm pretty sure at Lisboa I was basically just focusing on certain actions, not all of them. All right, I just yeah. wanted this, 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 and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does have a bit of that with so many yeah. actions you can't afford to ignore. Yeah. Elms. I remember what you did well actually. You. You just weren't paying resources to do the, um, that, I didn't realize how much it hurt you going back to Lisboa now mm -hmm. to slip a card under your board and pay the resources to do the action. Mm -hmm. I did way too much of that uh, and I just ran out of resources uh, and you didn't do that at all. Okay. I don't remember that, you but thank you. Actions. So there you go. So those are our top three favorite of Fidel Lucida games. Now I'd like to know what's your top three favorite of Fidel Lucida games or, and why? and maybe your least favorite. Um, so just write in the comment sections below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So that's it from us. I think you're probably listening to us long enough. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. That will help us as well. And if you haven't already subscribed to us, please click the people in the corner. Some will appear at one stage and um, or just click down below and subscribe to us. And we do a lot of videos, how to play, play through and so on. And I'm also on social media, Twitter, Instagram. So hopefully I'll see you and chat to you in one of those. And hopefully I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.